off on tonight's episode of Arrow, which is part two of the two-part Flash and Arrow crossover titled Legends of Yesterday. And um, this whole crossover has been such an epic event. Um, it's funny because these episodes, as I'm watching them, they don't even feel like episodes. They feel like movies. Like, as I'm watching it, there's so much going on and there's so much background stuff and so much that's just happening all at once that it all feels like it's one long movie. Like, it really does. Like, I'm watching, the, like, the, the, like last, the, or tonight's episode, and it just, it, like, it felt longer than an hour. Like, it really, really, really did. Uh, there's so much stuff to talk about um, between the two, between the, the two episodes. Overall, again, just, this felt like an event. Like, something that, while as much as I enjoyed the crossovers from last year, um, especially the Brave and the Bold part of it from Arrow, um, they didn't feel like an event. Like this, because they didn't, because they, didn't, they felt like like disjointed stories that were just they labeled as a, like two part crossover. But it really wasn't. It was just oh, you know, Arrow goes with Arrow, well, Arrow goes to Central City Wednesday, and then Flash goes to Star City the next day. You know, but this feels like it's one cohesive story. Like it's all centering around Hawk Girl and Hawk Man, and them trying to stop Vandal Savage, and between everything that was shown in these last two episodes, um, I. I geeked out so much, um, and I gotta say, starting off, I, I, I love Kiara Renee or Sierra Renee, uh, whatever her name is, um, the girl who plays Kendra Saunders, a uh, hot girl. Um, there's something about her and the way she carries herself in the role that at first I was kind of nervous about, but now that I'm watching the show and like, you no, know, like I, I buy it. I really like her. I like, I love her and Cisco's chemistry. I mean, it's sad that they had to, that they had to end, end end their relationship, but. I love, I loved her. I love, I love seeing her in the show. Um, and even the guy who played Hawkman, he did a better job than I thought he would because I'd never seen him like, like, like I, like I said in last night's uh, or my review of Flash last night. Um, I was worried because I'd never seen the guy in anything, so I had, I had no previous, you know, you know, knowledge of him as an actor. So as I was watching in the show, I was like, I was like, I was really nervous. But this episode, he got to do a little more, and I gotta say, I really enjoyed the episode, especially with them. Being in it, and, and, and again, I sound like a broken record here, but and again, just the event style of this episode and the two whole and the whole crossover itself just was such an amazing experience for me, um, especially because I, if you guys have been watching my videos for any for any number of months or days or whatever, um, I have had my worries about Arrow season four. Um, I've been on the fence about it so far. Um, but this episode felt so, it, it was an amazing episode from start to finish. I really don't have anything really wrong with it. I, this is the first episode in a long time that I haven't found anything really wrong. Other than like minor nitpicky things, like, you know, like I, I kind of wish they included Laurel and Thea and Diggle more into the story, but I know it was a jam packed episode with a lot going on. I get that, but there was just so much that I, we saw that and I still want uh, there's still more that I wanted to see but even then those just being nitpicky things I can't find really anything wrong with this I mean other than the fact that they sidetrack certain female characters that you know some people took offense to and I understand why um I, I understand I'm kind of in the middle I understand both sides of why they didn't use certain characters because the episodes were so packed as they were but this just was again an amazing episode and I can't feel like I've been saying the same thing for the last like four minutes um and I gotta say, so, so getting into the details of the episode itself, um, Oliver finally, the revelation of Oliver's son, um, who has the dumb name of William. And I guess the, the show writers and producers said a while back that Connor Hawk, who is Oliver's son in DC Comics, will not be his son in this universe. He will be in Legends of Tomorrow, but he won't be Oliver's son, which I think is freaking stupid. That is beyond stupid. Like, you have a kid who could be, like, especially with Legends of Tomorrow dealing with time travel, you have a, a prime opportunity to use Connor Hawk because he's eight, eight, like, okay, all of a sudden is eight years old or whatever right now in the present, right? So if they, go, if they bring him from the future, it makes perfect sense. If they, if they use him as an adult from the future, they have a perfect opportunity that, that, that they really aren't using. And that's really frustrating to me because I'm, again, I'm a huge comic book fan. I know all this stuff. So I'm watching this and I'm like why would they give him the name of William why not make him Connor Hawk you already gave us the tease that he has a, a, he has a son why not make him the son from the comics why make him some generic uh, white kid named William like you know who's 
Okay, the fact that he has a Flash action figure, that's one thing. I thought that's, I thought that's kind of funny. But the fact that they have a Captain Cold action figure in this universe, I thought that was kind of dumb. Like, seriously, why are you going to make an action figure of an, a real-life villain? Well, in that show, within the show, it's a real-life real, real life people, right? So they make a, a freaking Captain Cold action figure, which I know is really just the DC collectibles action figure from from our real world, you know? But I just thought, like, I think that which kind of took me out of it because I'm, like, really... But, but Oliver trying to, you know, want to be a part of his son's life and the fact that he's not telling Felicity, even in both, before uh, Barry reset the timeline and when, afterwards, he still isn't telling Felicity. And I think that's going to have really bad repercussions going forward. I mean, Oliver, is, 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 he's a compulsive liar. That's just who he is. I mean... He's gotten to the point where he it's just like a second nature to him. He like he doesn't know how to really be honest with people. And that's a character flaw that we kind of forgive because he's a superhero, but now it's at a point where it's like, dude, you've been doing this for how long now and you're seriously still gonna lie? Especially to the woman that you love. This is an instance where like when Felicity got all mad, her anger is justified. Like Felicity is the one person Oliver has always trusted, besides Diggle. Like, they've always been in the know about pretty much everything, except for some, some things last season. But she, Felicity, he, Oliver has always trusted her. So why not trust her with this? Like, why, why would it damage their relationship? If anything, Felicity would try to help. Like, that's just... I, I don't understand Oliver and his decision-making. I mean, I know that's him as a person, but whatever. But yeah. Um, so there was that. Um, again, Barry going back in time. It's funny, because I was getting into a fight with my brother about the whole time travel thing, the fact that they're, they're repeating themselves again from last season of Flash. Um... I think it was necessary. It's nice seeing Barry using his time travel abilities yet again. Um, something that I felt like because Flash is doing the whole Earth 2 thing that they weren't going to do time travel this season, um, and the fact that it's technically it wasn't an episode of Flash, I can't think kind of give them the opportunity to use time travel, but then, of course, they're probably not going to use it for the rest of the season, which is understandable. Um, Vandal Savage, I feel like the way they use him so far, I wasn't... Okay, he, he seems like an awesome villain. I, there's so much, from that, much more that I want to know, but I feel like... There wasn't enough of Vandal Savage for me to get that really interested in the character. Because um, I feel like he doesn't have like the gravitas that I would want Vandal Savage to have. Because it, all the animated stuff that I've seen him in, there's like, he's a scary dude. Like, he's a big, threatening dude. He's an immortal. Like, there's the aspect about him that you don't want to screw with, you know? So I'm watching the show, and it's like, he's not a, the, char the actor, and the character isn't bad. It's just, there's not enough to the character that makes me, like, make it all that compelling so that's just the gripe that i have it's, it's not that big a deal but I, I, okay I, I feel like i'm going just more and more negatives than i am to the positives about the show but like, i'm going more into the show itself again going i love the chemistry between cisco and kendra um and i love oliver's will or barry's willingness to be there for oliver when the timeline reset and warning him like hey like you know it's not my business but you not telling Felicity creates problems, like, and you guys have a big fight. And Barry does his best to try to be there for Oliver. And this whole crossover, to me, shows that, well, last year, the two of them struggled to work together. The dynamics of the whole team, both teams coming together, that it just seemed like it was a perfect fit. Like, last season, again, it felt a little disjointed, maybe because it was, it was you know, uh, Flash's first season compared to Arrow's third season, but now we're at a point where both shows they they they, they know what they're doing. Um, so seeing the teams work together in such in, in sync and it just it worked. It really worked for me. Like I love the team dynamic of this of this epi this these past two episodes. Um, especially seeing I mean the few Diggle scenes we had when you know Barry saved them and then Diggle threw up. He's like oh, every time like that was okay. That was pretty funny and that was something that I wish I had mentioned last time in my Flash episode review. Um, and again, just so much to geek out about this show. Um, I don't want to keep rambling on and on forever and ever, but again, just, this was an amazing crossover event. I think it was better as a whole than last year's. Um, I really want to see what happens moving forward with Oliver's son, um, with seeing, you know, Hawkgirl and Hawkman. Obviously, we're going to see them in Legends of Tomorrow, but then, and then Malcolm Merlin taking, um, Vandal Savage's ashes, obviously, because we all know Vandal Savage is coming back because he's the main villain of Legends of Tomorrow. Um, 
I'm just beyond excited for the rest of the, these shows now. Like, I really am. Um, Damien Dark, in the beginning of yesterday's episode, I thought it was kind of funny seeing him. But my issue with Damien Dark, I finally, I finally got to the point where I know what I don't like about Damien Dark. Which is the same thing I have I have about Vandal Savage as a villain. There's not like that gravitas to him. Neil McDonough is an amazing actor. I like his portrayal of the character, but the char- but the character himself doesn't seem threatening or imposing enough for Oliver to really be all that worried about. Yes, Damien Dark has abilities, but if Oliver really tried, it wouldn't be a struggle for him to, to defeat Damien Dark. So that's just like a, like a little mini gripe that I had. But yeah, again, an amazing crossover event. Probably my favorite episode of the season so far, besides the Constantine episode. Um, I feel like this show does better when they have the crossovers together, when they, when they, when they when they're using the characters together, because that's when I feel like the writers from both shows come together and they create a great episode. Like something I feel like uh, all like um, on Arrow they struggle with a lot because the, the, the episodes themselves all, don't always have great stories. You know, this was a great story. And I'm really looking forward to Legends of Tomorrow. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I'm really looking forward to the rest of these shows. So, yeah, I think that's going to be it for me, guys. So, if you guys like what you see here, go ahead and hit subscribe below. Um, I do review these shows, clearly. Um, Monday through Wednesday, every week. Supergirl, Flash, and Arrow, again, every week. Um, I do trailer reviews. I just did my Batman v Superman trailer review from the trailer that dropped tonight on Wednesday night that I, I really geeked out over. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead and check that out. I have all the trailer reviews like Captain America, the other Batman v Superman trailer, um, Suicide Squad, Star Wars. I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars in a couple weeks when that comes out if you guys want to check that out. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be it for me, guys. So until next week, have a good one.